In early 2016, we learned that minimal residual disease identifies a group of AML patients with a poor prognosis who actually may be candidates for transplantation or new therapies. Well, investigators are evaluating the safety and tolerability of crinolinib in combination with chemotherapy in newly diagnosed AML patients with uh, FLT3 mutations. And to talk about this here at ASCO, I'm with Dr. Richard Stone, who's a professor at Harvard Medical School and the director of the Adult Leukemia Program at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Let's start there with Ivy et al., who reported in 2016 in the New England Journal of Medicine on minimal residual disease. What did we learn from that? We learned that the optimal outcome after induction therapy is to achieve complete remission, which means you can't uh, detect any leukemic cells in the bone marrow with light microscopy, but to achieve that with no detectable disease by molecular means. Specifically, they used NPM1 mutations and other mutations to look for the presence or absence of these mutations after chemotherapy. People who achieved a remission at a level where they could not detect any residual mutations did much better than those who still had such mutations. Hence, measurable or minimal residual disease uh, is not a good thing. You don't want to be able to measure it. But minimal residual disease, it sounds promising, but in reality, it's not. You don't want to have minimal residual disease. You want to have no minimal or measurable, I prefer the word measurable residual disease, but you don't want to have it. Right. So let's talk about the data you're presenting here, uh, crinolinib plus standard induction in newly diagnosed uh, FLT3 mutant AML. Tell us about the study. Sure, well, there is emerging data that the combination of a FLT3 inhibitor with chemotherapy might be better than chemotherapy alone for patients who have FLT3 mutant leukemia. Uh, about 30% of patients with AML have a FLT3 mutation in their blast at the time of diagnosis. And studies with another drug called mitostorin, where there was a randomized trial of chemo plus or minus mitostorin, showed that mitostorin led to uh, a better survival if patients got it. So crinolinib is a more specific uh, FLT3 inhibitor than mitostorin. Uh, and the uh, developers of crinolinib thought it would be a good idea to determine if crinolinib could be given safely and effectively with chemotherapy in patients who have mutant FLT3 AML. Now these are going in different directions in terms of their targets, correct? The, the normal chemotherapy and the new agent. Correct. I mean, normal chemotherapy is rather nonspecific. The new agents, specifically this one, crinolinib, is supposed to be pretty specific for the FLT3 mutant enzyme. So you've got, what, 29 patients in the abstract? Did you add any more to that? Uh, not, no, this is, uh, that's pretty much it. There were, uh, there were 32 patients who achieved remission. 29 patients were valuable for uh, MRD, uh, minimal residual disease, uh, by flow cytometry. And what did you find? We found that a very large percentage, uh, I think uh, about 85% of those who achieved remission with one cycle of chemotherapy did so with undetectable residual disease by these flow cytometric uh, techniques. A little different than was used in the IV paper, but the same idea using immunophenotype to find the residual leukemia. So most of the patients who achieved remission did so without having minimal residual disease, which is a good thing. Those who did have minimal residual disease by this technique did relapse at a fairly high clip, where the ones who uh, didn't have minimal residual disease rarely relapsed. So what about safety and, and you know, how long were these patients treated? They were treated uh, beginning on day nine after the seven days of chemotherapy and they kept getting the drug uh, until they achieved remission, and they also got it with consolidation. But this was about induction, so they got it throughout, the, throughout, throughout their mission period, uh, I'm sorry, they got it throughout the induction period except for the first nine days. And safety, it was pretty good? It was, there, really no, there was no safety signal seen. Uh, it was very safe. So we should note this is an ongoing trial with a couple more years to go, right? It, it, yes, uh, they're still enrolling some more patients, uh, and then the issue is where are gonna go from here? Presumptively, it'll, it'll have to be a, a, an upfront trial comparing chemo to chemo plus mitostorin to chemo plus crinolinib. But at this point, the hypothesis looks really strong. It looks like the addition of, chemo, of, of crinolinib to chemotherapy uh, is a very effective anti-leukemic approach based on the large number of patients who achieved remission without any detectable residual disease. Well, for a lot of coverage from uh, the ASCO meeting here in Chicago, please check around for uh, Ash Political News. I'm Rick McGuire.